All right, in this video, we're gonna start off by introducing some of the different types of navigation we have in iOS. Let's take a look at some of the additions we'll be making to our app to explore the first type of navigation we'll be covering, which is push navigation. If I click on this cell, a screen will slide on here, and I get this button, which is a free back button to wherever I've come. And that's the great thing about push navigation. It knows exactly where you've been, and it keeps a history so you can always retrace your steps. Push navigation like your internet browser. In an internet browser, I always have this area up here that doesn't change. It's the chroming or the area around the content here. Now, if I click on a link, it'll take me to new content, but this chroming out here stays the same. And I can use the back button to go back through the exact history of where I've been. The next type of navigation is one you're very familiar with, and that's tab navigation. And we can draw another analogy using the internet browser. With tab navigation, I can create a new tab, navigate around, and my original tab over here isn't affected. In fact, they're completely independent from one another. The third type of navigation is called modal. Modal is often found in things like check-in or compose windows, something that's meant to come up and then be dismissed. It's similar to a lightbox effect. Now that we've introduced a few types of navigation, let's hone in on the push navigation and try to implement one ourselves. We'll implement the push navigation so we can scroll to any cell and get more details on whatever cell we click on. So we'll get started by opening our finished project from last week's assignment. So the purpose here is to be able to access a detail screen when we click on any of our cells here. So the first thing we'll do is add another view controller to be that detail screen. I'll go down here to our object library and pull out a view controller onto the storyboard. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is add a segue from the table view cell to this detail view controller. Now I could click on this and hope I have the cell selected, but that can be really dangerous because you never know if you're selecting on the cell or you're selecting something on top of it accidentally. It's much more safe to go over here to what's called the document outline and select your cell from here. That way there's no mistake of what you're connecting. So I can control drag from this movie cell to my view controller and select push. That's gonna create a push segue right here. Now we haven't set up our detail view controller yet, but let's just run our app and see what happens. Command B for build. Okay, let's click on a cell and see what happens. Uh-oh, my apps crash. Let's go down here to the console to see what's happening. The key information here is this. Push segues can only be used when the source controller is managed by an instance of UI navigation controller. All right, well, let's go ahead and add a UI navigation controller. I'm gonna go back to storyboard, click on my movies view controller, and from editor, select embed in navigation controller. You can see it automatically adds a navigation controller to the screen and hooks it up to our movies view controller. Let's run our app one more time and we'll click a cell. Great, it didn't crash this time. Now, of course, we don't have any content yet, but look, this nav bar is owned by the navigation controller. So we're only seeing the content here from our will be detail view controller. And this nav bar is actually the same nav bar that we still hear, only the content underneath is changing. Now, if we wanna customize this nav bar a little bit, we can double click here, maybe call this movies. And when we run our app, we see we have movies here in our navigation bar. Okay, now it's time to set up our detail view controller. I'm gonna add a UI image view from the object library here in order to display our movie poster. Next, I'm gonna grab a generic UI view and we'll use this to contain some of the labels that will have our information about our title and our overview. I'm gonna go ahead here and click on the attributes inspector and make this black with an 80% opacity. Next, I'm gonna add some UI labels. We'll have one label here for our title, and I'm gonna hit Option and drag this down in order to create the label for our overview. To make sure our title stands out, I'll click on this label and beef the font up just a little bit. I can also click here and make it bold. I can use the command Command equals in order to auto-size the label. And in this case, I'm going to drag it all the way to this other end to make sure we have enough room for the title. I'll do the same thing with our overview label. Let's run that. All right, looking good. 
Now I know I'm going to need to talk to this label in order to set the title and talk to this label to set the overview as well this image view in order to tell it to be the poster image. So if I'm going to be setting anything programmatically, I'm going to need to make a special class file for this view controller. I'll go over here to view controllers and select new file source Coco touch next. Make sure this is a subclass of UI view controller and we'll title this detail view controller. Back in the storyboard, we'll click the little yellow dot here of our view controller. And then in the identity inspector, we're going to set the class to detail view controller. Now, if I click the assistant editor, I'll get the file for my detail view controller. Next, we'll set up a line of communication between our code file and our objects here in the storyboard by creating outlets. Now I can drag from these labels directly in order to create an outlet. But let's practice the safer way of dragging from the document outline to make sure I know what I'm getting. So first I'll make a little room above my view did load and I'll take my image view, control drag over here to create an outlet. And I'll give it the name poster image view. I'll do the same thing with my labels. If I click the label, I can see that it is indeed that one. Control drag title label. And finally an outlet for my overview. I'll call this one overview label. Okay, another thing I like to do is take these labels and instead of just saying label, title them what they are. So title and overview. So now that we've made all our outlets and can communicate with the title overview and the image view, we want to set these with actual content. We're gonna use a similar technique that we did when we set the labels and image view in the cell, which is to use keys to go into a dictionary and get out the information that we want, like the title, the overview, and the poster view. So for now, let's create a variable to hold that movie dictionary. This exclamation point makes this an implicitly unwrapped dictionary, which is just to say that it's gonna automatically unwrap this if it's an optional. Let's head back to our movies view controller and see if we can figure out how to get this movie dictionary to the detail view controller. In the beginning of this video, we added a segue from the cell to the details view controller. Often, we're gonna to wanna to do some special thing right before we segue. Thankfully, there's a method just for that called prepare for segue. Scroll to the bottom of your movies view controller. And now if you take these comments out here, you'll notice this method, prepare for segue. Now I actually added this print statement earlier that's just gonna print prepare for segue called every time this method is called. Let's run the app and see when it's called. Okay, I'll click on the cell and we can see that prepare for segue has been called. Now, what about when we return? You'll notice prepare for segue was not called in that situation. It's only called when you move forward on that segue not when you return. Let's head back to our prepare for segue method. In order to get the right movie out of our movies array, we'll need to figure out the index path for the cell that was clicked. We can reference where the segue is coming from or who called it by looking at sender. So we can get the cell that we tapped on simply by saying let cell equals sender and we'll cast it as a UI table view cell. Now that we have the cell, we wanna get the index path. In order to do that, we can reference the table view and run a method on the table view called index path for cell, where we'll pass it a cell and we'll get back an index path. We'll use cell, which we defined here. Now that we have our index path, we can use that to index into the array to get out the right movie. We'll say let movie equals movies, the array of movies, and we'll use the index path dot row to get the right movie. Now we'll probably need to do some unwrapping here. Let's see what this error message is. Yep, Xcode wants us to add an exclamation point to unwrap the movies array and also an exclamation point to unwrap the index path. Just like segues know where they're coming from, they know where they're going to. So this is a good way to get at our details view controller because that's where we're going to. We can say something like let detail view controller equals segue dot destination view controller. That's where the segue is going. At this point, it'd be great if we could, so let's see if this is enough to reference the movie property that we made in our detail view controller. 
Now right now, I'm trying to type in detail view controller that we defined here. But notice we have the uppercase detail view controller and the lowercase detail view controller. Sometimes this can get confusing with autocomplete and you can put in the wrong one. Remember, detail view controller was the specific class file that you made, the custom file for your detail view controller. The lowercase detail view controller represents this constant that you set here. So that's the one we want to use, the lowercase detail view controller. But when I do dot movie, I don't seem to see the autocomplete showing me I can access that property. Let's hold option and click on detail view controller when we get this question mark. Okay, here we can see that the detail view controller is of type UI view controller, which is just a generic UI view controller. We need it to be of type detail view controller, the, the custom class file that we created for this view controller. In order to do that, let's go over here and cast this detail view controller to detail view controller. Notice now I'm using the uppercase because it's of that type or that class. Now, if I go back down here, hopefully, Yep, there's our movie property, which is of type NS dictionary that we made in our detail view controller. I'll want to set that to the movie we made here. Great, let's go back to our detail view controller and see if we've actually passed the data. Over here in the view did load, I'm just gonna print that dictionary movie. And we'll run the app and see if we're getting the right data. Okay, I'll click on a movie and we can see that we got the dictionary that corresponds to the Revenant. Let's try it with another movie just to make sure. Cool, you can see we've got stuff related to the big short. So we're on the right track. We'll do that in the view did load because that method is run every time that the detail view controller is pushed onto the stack. To get the title, we'll look into our movie dictionary and plug in the key title. If I hold option and click on title, I can see that right now it's any object. So I wanna make sure that I cast this as a string. Now that I've got the title, I'll set the title label.text to title. We'll do the same thing to get our overview. This time we'll use the key overview in our dictionary. We can then set the text using overview label.text equals overview and cast that as a string. Let's run that and see if it works. So when I click on a cell, you can see that indeed the title is set and the overview is set. If I go back here, I can click on a different one and I get the correct title and correct overview. Now you can see that we've got a little truncation going on here and also my selection stays selected here. Now those are little details that we're gonna go ahead and fix, but we're successfully passing data now from this cell over to here.